just very simple. John 3.16. John 3.16. We know this verse. We, we are very familiar to this verse. This dear church, as we continue our study in the Gospel of John, we found ourselves here in this magnific magnificent text in chapter 3, verse 16. It is the most uh, famous Bible verse in all time. It is the most translated verse in all the scriptures. When, try, when translators try to pick a verse that summarizes everything about Christianity, they chose this verse, John 3.16. It is the Bible in a nutshell. It contains gospel truths are concisely and succinctly written. God so loved the world. May I ask you, dear church, amidst hey. the familiarity of this verse, does the reality of this truth penetrate to our heart? Does it still produce joy in your heart when we are reminded of those precious truths that God so loved the world? You, know, you can have many reactions. Maybe, maybe your reaction is this, what of this? Maybe you will say to yourself, ah, I have known this verse for a very long time now. I have known this verse. I can quote this very quickly. In my, I can pluck it out of my memory and say, John 3.16, God sold out the world. And we can just say that very, very flippantly. I've memorized this verse since I was young, since I was in Sunday school. Yeah, not this, you know. Basic stuff. It's A, B, C. It's one, two, three. Very basic. Yes, true. True. These verses are very basic and, and very foundational indeed. Good that you have memorized this. But may I say to you that the gospel that you have known before is not the, just the basic stuff. And after learning that, we proceed to higher truths of Christianity. There is nothing higher than the gospel. It is a precious truth that should consume us when we first un understood it. It is a precious truth that we, we try to understand more as we believe on it. And we continue to, lo to learn more day after day after day. And even until the very last days of our life. For God, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. There's nothing more to be found in the gospel. In such a way that some of you young boys and girls would, would, would learn some of your basic science and much stuff and then you will proceed more to greater, um, greater uh, scientific truth. No, the tr truth of the gospel is so big. The truth of the gospel is so wide. The truth of the gospel is so deep. The truth of the gospel is so profound and mysterious. Even our lifetime is not enough. And even if God would grant us eternal life forever and ever and, and we desire to know more about this truth of the gospel, our life will never be enough for God so loved the world. Or maybe you will say to yourself today, I've never ever heard of such love that, that you, you, Michael, you're preaching about. Well, I might have heard it in, in my friends or, or my co-workers or family members would, would talk about this love, but I've never had that experiential, expe, expe, not experiential knowledge of that love. Is that concerning, my friend? That many, many in the world is being saved today. This morning, this, this Sunday morning, many are being saved today. They are believing on Christ. They are trusting on this Savior. Yet it seems that you have been left out. You don't know the news. You have, you, you've never heard of this breaking news that God so loved you. You have come to the right place. You have come to the most precious truth in this Bible. God, so you, you, in spite of all the 
gravity, yes. despite of yes. your sinfulness, yes. despite of yes. all yes. the things that you have done, not only against yourself, not only against your family or other people in this world, uh, but against ultimately to your God. Yeah. God loves you. The Lord of heaven and earth loves you. Oh church, I got nothing. I got nothing but simple truth to you today. God loves the world. God loves the world that He gave His Son. That is what is the text of John 3.16 is all about. This is what is the Bible all about. This is what is that what's the church is all about. This is what evangel evangelical Christianity is all about. This is what our church is all about. God loves the world. And the church. I got a very simple message and theme to you this morning. Very simple message. The message is this. Let not the simplicity and familiarity of the gospel message rob our hearts of the wonder and the reality of God's amazing love. Let, let not the simplicity and the familiarity of this gospel message that we know, that we have heard, that we have, we have uh, heard uh, preached many and many times, we let not the simplicity and familiarity of it rob the wonder, rob our heart to wonder and the reality of this gospel truth. I can say that these two familiarity and seemingly simplicity simplistic message of the gospel can flap away that wonder that, that, that wonder that contains in the truth we, we, we know this anyway we have heard it countless and countless times but I challenge you cons to consider the following truths to steer our hearts back to our devotion to our Lord and to you my friend who has not yet known the gospel I pray I sincerely pray that the Lord would open your heart and open your mind that you may see the, the wonder of this love and the depravity of your sin and the call for the Lord for you to repent and believe in the gospel and the call for you to follow Him now and forever. Yes. Ah, that's my prayer to you. And in order to, 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 to see the wonder of it, may I will, I will see I will talk about three things this morning. Number one, let us consider the great lover. It is God. Let, number two, let us consider the greatest act. He gave His Son. Yes. And number three, let us consider the greatest promise, eternal life. Greatest lover, it is God. And the greatest act, He gave His Son. And the greatest promise, eternal life. Let us therefore read our text again on John 3.16. But to have a proper background for the text, let us read from John chapter 3, verse, verse 9 to 18. John chapter 3, verse 9 to 18. Nicodemus said, said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen. But you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the, he who ascended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. Again, uh, in this text, Nicodemus said to Christ, How can these things be? Are, are you, and Christ it just plainly rebuke him. Uh, are you the teacher of Israel? Yet you do not understand what I'm saying. I'm talking of, of heavenly things and you have spent your many, many years of your life studying the scriptures, studying the Old Testament and all these laws and on, on the and the prophets, but you, you haven't understand the thing. What's happening? Uh, truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know. This is, uh, this, is, is uh, this is Jesus saying to him, you I speak of what I'm saying because this is our heavenly stuff and I came from heaven. I am Messiah. I came from heaven. I am the Lord Almighty. 
We have here, uh, we can see here Nicodemus as a way of review, was a man of the Pharisee. It is so important to note that because, note that, that because we have here the epitome and the highest peak of Judaistic religion. Presenting himself to Christ. I, I, he is the, he's the highest peak, he's the epitome, he's the number one example of, of Judaistic religion. Yet, it is not enough to please the Lord. No religion, no outward works, no self-righteousness can please the Lord. All our works are like filthy rags. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 says, uh, We are not saved by works so that none can boast. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9 says, You think in Nicodemus you are righteous? Have you not heard what the psalmist said in, in Psalm, in the Psalter? He said, there is no one who does good. No one who understands Psalm 53 verse 1. No one who understands. No one who seeks God. Romans chapter 3 verse 10. I thought you could use your, the teacher of Israel. Have you heard that the prophet said in Isaiah? Oh, we like sheep have come astray. That includes you, Nicodemus. No, no, no religion can save you. No words, no uh, uh, self-righteousness can save you. Maybe you will say to yourself, I'm, I'm, I'm good. No, no, the Lord demands perfect, sinless righteousness which no one in this world can obtain. Number two, uh, Jesus expressly and emphatically said to Nicodemus that he must be born again. He must be born from above. Uh, you know, all your works, Nicodemus, is not enough. You know the depravity of your heart. You may, you probably, you can hide from the cloak of your religiosity, but deep inside your heart, it is is full of of, of filth and uh, full of filth and all the depravity it is. Uh, you may have a good robe because you're the teacher of Israel anyway. But deep inside, you are rotting and you are now going to hell because God will condemn you. You know what you needed, Nicodemus? God says, I pray that the Lord will, will turn your heart of stone, your heart of stone to heart of flesh. And you know that, Nicodemus. It's, it's in Ezekiel, the prophet says that. Ezekiel 36, 26, you need to have a heart of flesh. You must be born again. You must be regener regenerated by the Spirit of God. You need a new spirit within you. And you know that. That's on Ezekiel eleven nineteen. You know this. Knowledge, though, is not enough. You could use your work. Your work is not enough. It is the marvelous work of the Spirit of God in you, quickening your heart, quickening, quickening your your heart of stone, and turning it into heart of flesh. Not before you can't see God, but now you can see Him. And it's the power of the Holy Spirit, not of your works. I'm not sure why you come in here. You could use to to to. Maybe to affirm your righteousness before me. But I'm telling you, no, no, no. You have a heart of stone. And then the third turning point of discussion is in verse 14 to 15. And God says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Christ. Christ is the greatest master teacher. He uses a perfect illustration. Uh, he has given a, an illustration that Nicodemus is very familiar with. An incident by which Israelite during Moses' time uh, grumbled and sinned against the Lord. And, and the Lord sent forth a fiery serpent to, to beat them. And most of them uh, died during that time. But God relented in his anger and Moses, Moses the prophet of the Lord, cried to the Lord to provide rescue. And the, the, the Lord said through Moses, look unto the serpent rose, look, uh, look and live, and look and live, and look and live, and trust and believe, and you shall be saved. It is very simple, Nicodemus, and you are not getting it. And at this point, I think somehow uh, Nicodemus get it get that illustration and the simplicity of it all look and live look 
and live and Christ will be crucified later on Nicodemus uh, will, will, will see the crucified Christ and he will definitely be sure that Christ will be lifted up and Christ will be crucified Jesus is the Christ and you must believe on him Nicodemus look and live you know this must have shocked Nicodemus he must have realized the simplicity of this all. And the answer that he is looking for is Christ himself, the Son of God, right in front of him. Of course, we know that he was later on converted and become follower of Christ. And we, he, he, he must have forever cherished uh, this discussion with the Lord himself. Church, that's the background of chapter 16. And... Uh, Pure against the seemingly uh, simplistic and familiarity of this text. I want to gather your attention back to the text itself. Let us refresh our memory. Let us refresh our love for God by reading through this text. Number one, let us see that the greatest lover is God. The greatest lover is God. For God so loved the world. Let us consider this God whom the Lord Jesus Christ has said that He so loved the world, that so loved the world, that this God, He is not, not a God uh, made of our own uh, image and likeness. No, no. He is the God of heaven. He is the Lord of all creation. He is the only one and only God. He is the one true God. Calvin said it, it's Christ opened up the first cause, as it were, the cause of our salvation, so that no doubt may remain. He, he, in this great topic, he opened up the first subject of it all. God, God, God so loved the world. Number one, let us consider, let us consider this God. This is a holy God. Number uh, Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord uh, high and lifted up, seated on a throne, and the train of His robe filled the temple. Above Him uh, were seraphim, each with six wings. Uh, with two they covered their face, with two they covered it, their feet, and with two they flew. Uh, they were calling to one another, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of His glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and threshold shook, and the temple was filled with holy smoke. Oh, and then Isaiah said, Woe to me! I am ruined! I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. And my eyes, my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Oh, He is holy. He is not just holy, just, just like that, but He is three, three, three times holy, emphasizing that this is God, this holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Isaiah. The prophet of God himself, and we beheld the holiness of this God, he uttered one single prayer. And he said, Woe to me! Oh, curse be upon me, because I have sinned this God, this God who is above me, this God who is uh, apart from me, and this God who is against me. This is a holy God. This is a God full of righteousness. This is a God that is beyond... Uh, any category is the only one true God, the holy God. This is God. He is against you because of your sin. Behold, this is the God, John 3.16. This God so loved you. This God so loved you. Number two, let us consider this powerful God. This God is omnipotent. This God is a sovereign God. He will do whatever He pleases in a manner He pleases. Daniel chapter 4 verse, 39, 4, 4 verse 35 says, He does according to His will in the hosts of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can ward off His hand and say to Him, What are you doing? Yeah. Maybe, maybe some of you, of you here are fathers or mothers and you know, when your child is doing something like, Hey, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. No, what are you doing? No. But the, then we can say that to our Lord. He is all powerful. He do what He wants. Yeah. Yes. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 6. No one is like you, O Lord. 
You are great. Your name is mighty in power. Behold, this God can save you to the uttermost because He is a powerful God. And He will save you indeed. Behold, this is your God. This is the God of John 3.16. Not only we will consider that this God is a holy God, this God is a powerful God, we will also consider that this is a just God. This is a just God. He will not let the guilty unpunished. He will, he will give uh, us the just deserve of all our iniqui iniquities. He is a just judge. He must uphold his justice. Bad news for you, my friend. Because you cannot satisfy this justice oh God, that the Lord demands from you. You miss the mark, and you you will always miss the mark. Oh, God, God, God will punish your sins surely and swiftly. Psalm 130 verse 3 says, If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities among us, who can stand? Who can stand? So Isaiah chapter 3 verse 13 says, uh, The Lord arises to contend and stands to judge the people. In Revelation chapter 20 verse 11 to 15, One day, one day, uh, all of us will be at the great white throne of God. Uh, Revelation chapter 20 says, I saw a great white throne and he who sat upon it and from whose presence earth and heaven fled away no place was found for them and I saw the great dead great and small standing before the throne of God and the books were open the Lord the Lord will judge you the Lord will judge you because he is a just God. he is a righteous God that he provided a way. Jesus. He provided the way. Christ, the propitiation of his sacrifice to the cross on behalf of your sin. He, who knew no sin, became sin for us. He is just. At the same time, the justifier of those who <coughs> behold this is your God this is the God who so love you but not only that not only we will consider that this is a holy God and this is a powerful God that this is a just God let us consider that this God is a benevolent God look at this God he loves so much he lavishly loves us. He is, uh, he is a gracious God. He kept uh, His promises and covenant to His people. He is a very good and kind God. Psalm 103 verse 8 to 11 says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always cry, nor will He keep His anger forever. It, is, it does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is His steadfast love toward those who fear Him. As far as, east, as the east is from the west, so far does He remove our transgression from us. Your loving kindness, O Lord, Psalm 36, verse 5, is great to the heavens. It extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Psalm 57, 10 says, For your loving kindness, loving kindness is great to the heavens, and your truth to the clouds. Should it be asked, what is man? that you are mindful of him, the son of man, that you care for him. The love of God is not the The love of God is not the arrows. 
the love, this God is an agape love. This is an unconditional love. This is a boundless love forever. And behold, this is your God. This is the one who so loved you. Yet what is our response? What is our response to this God? We sin against Him. We sin, uh, we sin so, so frequently. <laughs> the moment we wake up, instead of giving praise to Him, instead of, instead of uh, taking Him for everything, what you probably would say is, is complaints about the weather or the day or what. And it goes throughout the day. You sin so frequently. And, and we sin so frequently against this God. John Piper said, uh, what is sin? What is sin? What is sin? It is the glory of God, not honor. The, the holiness of God, not reverence. The greatness of God, not admire. The power of God, not praise. The truth of God, not soft. The wisdom of God, not esteem. The beauty of God, not treasured. The, the commandments of God, not obeyed. The justice of God, not respected. The wrath of God, not feared. The grace of God, not perish, not, not cherished. The presence of God, not prized. The person of God, not loved. That is sin. You have sinned against him. You have fallen short against him in every day of your life. You have fallen short of this, uh, of the, of the, the righteousness that this Lord demands from you. Yet the wonder of God's love is this: though you sin, God loves you. Though you sin, God loves you. God so loved the world. God so loved the world. Uh, just a quick one here. We will focus on the world here. Uh, the Greek is here is uh, cosmos. Uh, it has been mentioned primarily by John. By John, so it has been mentioned seven to eight times and uh, twenty-four times alone. It, it ju just in, in this epistle. Number one, let us know that there must be aware of many interpre interpretational debate on the extent of this world. It, it's not everyone without exception. It's not everyone without exception. It is his, God's love towards his elect and, and towards whom he is going to save. Number two, it must have been another shock to the demons. The world. God loves the world, meaning Jews and Gentiles. He thought the salvation is only for the Jews. He also observed, it should be observed that our Lord was now dis discoursing with a Jewish rabbi that he is opposing a commonly received notion of theirs uh, that when the Messiah came, that, that the Gentiles should have no benefit or advantage by him, only the Israelites. And Pink says, uh, Christ here, that enough. Christ there announced God's love in giving His Son a larger object in view. That He flow beyond the boundary of Palestine, reaching out to the regions beyond. In other words, this was Christ's announcement that God had a, had a purpose of grace towards Gentiles as Jews. God so loved the world. Signifies then that love is in international in its hope. It, it, it transcends the boundary of, of, of Palestine. Not one of us here can say, oh, I can trace my, my ancestry from the tribe of Judah. I came from the, from the, uh, from, from, from the tribe of Benjamin, the father of the father of the south. God so loved the world that includes you. you sh originally, you should not be on uh, the plan. Oh, you should not be you know, included in that salvation during that time. Well, as far as Nicodemus says, no, look at you. We, we, are, we are not from Israel. 
We are not from 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 that tribe yet, yet, yet. God did us, yet God uh, saved us, yet God predestined us before the foundations of the world. So, so, because God so loved the world. Oh, Lord, oh, the, the whole world. Uh, Romans chapter 9, verse 25 says, I'll just jump into the text. Uh, it says in Hosea, I will call them my people uh, who are not my people. That is us. That is us. We are not the people of God originally. We are Gentiles and we deserve wrath and justice I'm from God. But we are called by God, my people. Yeah. You are God's people. It, it will happen that in every place, uh, in the Romans chapter 9, verse 26, it will happen that in every place where it was said to them, you are not my people, what? they will be called the sons of the living God. Mm. What does the prophet Malachi say? Malachi chapter what? 1, verse 11. Or from the rising of the sun to its setting down, the, the, the name of the Lord shall be great among all the nations. Mm. It's so simple to us because we have heard this many times. But if you realize that God has, by His plan, Draw out this chart and say it should, the salvation should be for the Jews only. But now I will open up uh, the gates of heaven that all who believe in Him may come in. And then you will realize I should not have been here, and that should be our proper response when we hear the word God so love you. I should not. I should. I don't deserve this love. I am never deserving of this love. I don't even belong to the tribe of Israel. But yet, 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 God so love. And one day, one day, we will be with Him forever. And, and it's a good thing though that not only Australia will be there, not only people from Adelaide will be there, people from every tribe, from every nation, from every people, from every languages and cultures will one day uh, bring glory to God and give praise to Him. Lord, 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 You have so loved the world that You gave Your only Son. I don't deserve to be in Your throne, but Lord, Lord, You have so loved me. Lord, we give glory to your name. We give praise to your name because, Lord, you have included us in the plan of your redemption. Oh, after this, look, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and people, languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes. Oh, and one day all of us will say, all hail the power of Jesus' name in every time, in every nation, in every language. Oh, all hail the power of Jesus name let angels prost prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all because of that love from God God so loved the world and no tree here however does the, not only the scope he is being stressed here but the magnitude and severity of our sin of this world this cosmos which is an evil system against God in every sense uh, D.A. Carson said it this way, God's love in John 3.16 is not amazing because of its scope. Because the world is so bad, so big. But because the world is so bad. Despite your depravity, despite your, your proneness to wonder, despite your, your, your proneness to live, the, the God that you love, yet, yet the grace of God is like a feather that chains you for your goodness that we will give a praise and offer our hearts to Him sincerely. Our challenge is here. My challenge for you this morning is this. Shouldn't this truth be enough uh, to get back to our knees and give glory to God for such a great love? He has known us. He has chosen us. He loved us. This omnipotent, holy, loving, evil God. Should it be us, the same thing that the hymnist wrote during the 1800s? Amazing love. How can it be that thou 
my God. Oh, God is the greatest lover. God is the greatest lover of all time. He's the only one who loves us. But not only that, we will proceed to the second point. He is the greatest act. He gave His Son. It says in here, For God so loved the world that He gave His Son. Uh, not only that God loves us and, you know, He just don't do anything. In fact, He moved, He planned, He executed His works of redemption. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that He gave, that He gave. Uh, there's, a, there's a motion in here that the, he, 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 he put everything into action. He gave His one and only Son. The grammatical arrangement of this text on Greek puts an emphasis on the word, on the word only Son. It can, it can be rendered this way, for God so loved the world that His Son, He gave. His son, he gave. The, the greatest act is not only that God gave, because he has given us so much, so much in this world. Whatever you have right now, it comes from the Lord. Yet the greatest thing is because he gave his son. He gave his son. It is a sacrificial love. Uh, Nicodemus must be aware of the story of Abraham and Isaac. Uh, the Lord asked Abraham to sacrifice his son, his only begotten son. <coughs> Abraham replied, though, of course, he loved Isaac dearly. He loved him so much. Isaac knew, uh, uh, without knowing the thoughts of their fathers, he said, what? He said, Isaac said, we got the woods, we got the altar, where is the sacrifice? And Abraham said, Abraham said, the Lord, the Lord will survive. So Isaac was laid down the altar. And when, a when Abraham, Abraham was about to strike him, the Lord stopped him. He has known the hearts of Abraham. He is willing to give his son, his only begotten son. And the Lord was pleased with Abraham. And Abraham said, uh, Abraham named the place Jehovah Jireh. Uh, the Lord will provide. And to this day, it is still the same on the mountain of the Lord. It will be provided. Maybe... Maybe some of us would say, wow, that was a great rescue. We would we'll probably say, that, that is a great act. But that is just an intermission number. That is just an intermission number. The greatest act is this, that the only begotten son, but not, not Isaac, but Christ himself, his only son, the Lord gave him for our sin. It pleased the Lord to crush him uh, for our sin. He died so we may live. In the mountains of the Lord, in Calvary, the Lord shall provide. And the Lord will not only provide you uh, goods and, and whatever material needs that you, you need. The Lord provide for your salvation. In the mountain of the Lord, in Calvary, the Lord provided. He's the Lamb that will take away the sins of the world. Your sin and my sin has been taken away, has been atoned for, has been propitiated by Christ and Christ alone. It needs a God to satisfy the wrath and justice of this God. Christ. Is that God? He is the Son of God. The Lord, the Lord did not give us health and wealth and prosperity. No, He gave His Son, the most precious and the beloved. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the Word of Life. First John one one. He is the image of God. Second Corinthians four four. He is the image of the invisible God. Colossians one fifteen. He is the express image of His person. Hebrews one three. The brightness of His glory. The wisdom of God. He is the power of God. He is the shepherd of Israel. He is the shepherd and bishop of our soul. He is the good shepherd. He is the great shepherd. He is the chief shepherd. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb that was slain without blame and spot the lamb that was laid Christ alone is the only and only and only Savior of this world you cannot save your sin you save yourself from your sin Christ Christ alone till on the cross as Jesus died the wrath of God has been satisfied for every sin on him was laid 
here in the death of Christ. Oh, the beauty of our God that He gave a God like Him for us. It is, uh, John Flavel said it this way, it is a special consi consideration to enhance the love of God in giving Christ, that in giving Him, He gave the richest jewel in His cabinet, a mercy of the greatest worth and most inestimable value. Heaven itself is not so valuable as precious as Christ is. And on the last sentence, uh, uh, Christ is heaven's wonder and earth is wonder one. Maybe the Lord will give us so much in this life, or maybe the Lord has blessed us with so much in this life, but we will say, fair is the sunshine, fairer is the moonlight, still the moonlight, and all the twinkling starry hosts. Jesus shines brighter, Jesus shines purer, that all the heaven and angels can vote. Oh, my, my friend, the Lord give you God Himself, Jesus Christ Himself. He is the fairest of all. He is, he is the most wonderful and brightest of all that the Lord can give you. Oh, I pray. You know what is the cure against the sim seemingly simplistic uh, approach in this John 3, 16? Oh, I pray that every one of you will have, mm. every one of us will have, will be filled with Christ and His Word and His uh, atoning yeah. sacrifice, that our lives be filled with Him, uh, that He is, uh, Lord, not just, just, like, just like Peter, Lord, to whom shall I go? To whom shall I go? I have nothing. I have left everything behind to follow you because you have the words of eternal life. Just like Paul. Just like Paul. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Hallelujah. All I have is Christ. Oh, pray. I pray that we will have that in our hearts. Our challenge for us is this. Let Christ and His work be precious to us, and it will never, never dull our hearts in devotion to Him. In uh, that Christ be and His work be precious to us, and it will never dull our hearts in devotion to Him. And a quick one, last, last point, greatest promise, eternal life, eternal life. Whoever believes in Him will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His Son, that whoever believes in Him will have eternal life. Dear friends, who has not, who has not known Christ, who, who doesn't know Christ as His Savior and Lord, can we see the simplicity of God's call for us? It is said in here, whoever believes on him whoever believes in him he's not requiring you to to understand the deepest mysteries of christian faith he wants you to believe on him in him alone that you acknowledge that he alone is the answer to your sin and misery and he 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 alone can save you look upon him and be saved and you shall surely be saved he has a promise. He says, it says in here, whoever believes on Him will have eternal life, a zoe life, a complete life in Christ. He has a promise and He has never broken any promises He can be relied on. That's why He is inviting us. He is inviting you, my dear friend, who has who's not yet known Christ. Come to Him. Well, who, who, if you are weary and heavy laden. He will give you rest. Come to Him. Uh, come from, come to Him. Rest from the wrath of God. Rest from His judgments. Uh, maybe you are tired of your sin and the consequences of your sins, and you want to be saved from it. And know, you know that, that the, and you know from this preaching that this is the love of God. Come to Him. Then. It's just very simple. Come to Him and be saved. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 1 and 2 says, Come, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. He has no money. He has no money. Come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money on that which will not satisfy? Come to the Lord, he says. You know, vanities in this life cannot satisfy you. 
pleasures or careers or friendships or relationships or whatever else cannot satisfy you and will not satisfy you, come therefore to the living waters of the gospel. Come, He will give us eternal life, a Zoe life, a life that is full of real, real life in Christ from the giver of life Himself. And that is the invitation for us this morning. Call upon Him and you you shall be saved. This is a promise that we can rely upon. Friend, to taste the bread of salvation. Believe on Him and you shall be saved. For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son that whoever believes on Him should not perish, but have eternal life. Oh, such a great God. Oh, such a great act that He gave His Son and such a great promise given to us this morning. Call upon Him and be saved and let us be filled with Christ and the wonder of that atoning word so as pure to, to our hearts that is dry. Let's call upon the Lord and be saved. Let's pray.